pröva att stoppa om du tör We've been going through several stages. We talked about self-awareness. Who am I? Asking that central question in one's life. Looking at your strengths and your weaknesses. Getting some evaluation, determining what it is you want out of life. Then we went to the next level of self-what? Self-approval. Approving yourself to do the things that you like to do. And going after the dreams that you like to go after. And we know when we don't approve of our dreams because of the fact that they stay up in our minds. We don't act on them. We procrastinate. We come up with a variety of excuses on why we are not going into action. And then the next level is what? Self-commitment. Going for that dream. Going for those goals. Deciding to do the things that are necessary to bring about the changes that we want to bring in our lives or what we want to bring in society. And then after that, we are now to this level. And this stage is what? self-fulfillment because when you are involved in commitment when you are implementing your plan of action you're going to produce some results you're going to have some victories that you can feel good about and it's a time of celebration so what happens when you hit the level of self-fulfillment first of all what we want to know is that self-fulfillment is unending and should be viewed in that context robert chula says it best when he says success is never ending so that means that we never get to a level where we feel that there's nothing else for us to do, that we've achieved certain number of goals and we figure that we're through. No, no. You don't want to stay there and celebrate too long like a lot of people do. And they do something they consider outstanding. They go around talking about what they used to do. See, let me tell you, I used to do this and I used to do that. Excuse me, used to bees don't make no honey. <laughs> what are you doing now? What have you done for me lately? You know? <laughs> Go around telling me about what you used to do and who you used to be. <laughs> what does that count for now? Nothing. What are you doing now? You're still here breathing. That means you've got some more to give. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter about where you are, doesn't matter about what you have, doesn't matter about what you've done. Life is about growing, it's about being productive, it's about stretching, it's about challenging yourself. So you start looking around and decide, hey, hey, wh what else do I want to do? What, what got me here? It's a time for celebration, but also a time for reflection. What got me here? What worked? What did not work? What do I need to do to repeat so that I can get the same kind of results in other areas of my life? If the goal is to improve my health, if the goal is to improve my relationship, if the goal is to improve my income, if the goal is to improve something in society, what is it I need to do? Now, don't get confused with what you do with who you are. Don't trip. Don't go on some type of ego trip about talking about how bad you are. None of us do anything by ourselves. Develop an appreciation for external support as well as good fortune because all of those things play a role. The other thing is, don't go overboard celebrating. Kipling says it best. You must meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. You look at it, hey, I did it. I feel good about that. Now you're moving on to the next thing. Things did not work out the way you wanted them to work out. You didn't produce the results you wanted to produce. Hey, miss that. Win some, you lose some. Next, moving right on. Don't confuse who you are with what you do. Let's go on to the next level looking in that particular area. You return to the area of self-assessment. You start looking at yourself and evaluating yourself. Now, what are some of the elements or the characteristics or the qualities of people who are fulfilled, who, who live a life of fulfillment? What are some of the things we can look at about them? I think, number one, make your mind fertile ground for the seeds of opportunity. I think if you want to experience a sense of fulfillment, you've got to have an open mind so that ideas can come in there and take root and grow. So part of beginning to have fertile ground, you know, you got to break that ground up. You got to break up that hard crust because if you don't, seeds will fall there and the wind can blow them away, the winds of doubt. When you're set in your mind and you refuse to grow and you're not open to new ideas, new methods, new ways of doing things. If your mind is already fixed, you become stagnant. 
You can't grow. You can't have a sense of fulfillment. You become extremely cynical and negative about everything. You know it all. So you want to begin to look at life and have a sense of curiosity, not know it all. You want to keep learning, keep growing. And realize that we had a theme. You never find out how much you know until you find out how little you know. And there are some people you can't tell anything. They have all the answers. Oh, I've already done that. Larry D'Angelo was telling me, he said he was on a plane and he was observing two men talking. And, he, and the guy was um, reading a magazine. He looked at the guy next to him and said, would you like to um, read this magazine, I'm, share this magazine I have? No, I read that before. Don't like it. Don't like it. Okay. So he had a newspaper. He said, um, what about the USA Today? No, I read that before. Don't like that either. Try that once. Don't like that. So they served them some food. And he said, would you care to have anything I have here? Because the guy wasn't eating. No, no. Try that before. I don't like that. And um, he noticed guy only had one child. He said, <laughs> what Larry was trying to say is <laughs> that a lot of people go through life prejudging things. How many of you don't like buttermilk? Raise your hands, please. How many of you raise your hands and never taste buttermilk, please? Uh, <laughs> And I'm one of them. I just don't like the way it looks, all right? I might be missing out on something, all right? So many of us count ourselves out of things prematurely. You don't know what the possibilities are up in there. So you want to be open. You want to continue to learn. You want to continue to grow. You want to begin to know that there are unlimited ideas out here waiting for you to latch on to them. And if you don't take advantage of them when they come your way because you're so close-minded, do understand somebody else will. And we've all had ideas that we did not act on and looked around and somebody else had the idea and gone with it. So be open and receptive. Next thing, if, in order to live a fulfilling life, become involved in life. Live your fantasy. Most people go through life not living their fantasy, going, sitting up in the bleachers, looking out on the field, looking out into the arena, wishing that they were down there, just fantasizing, seeing themselves running with the ball. I used to do that. I used to always see myself at a basketball game. One second to go, Les Brown comes down court. He looks to his right, looks to his left. He's the only one that can do it. Dush, the basket goes in, Les saved us. And people picked me up and carried me off. But I never went out and did it. <laughs> Decide to live your fantasy. See, in life, you can go through life, you can come up with reasons or you can come up with results. You can come up with excuses or you can come up with achievements. You can go through life blaming or you can come up with solutions. The choice is in your hands, satisfaction or despair. We can choose that. So look at your life and decide what it is that you want to do that will give your life a sense of worth. Someone said that your life worth is measured by your accomplishments and not by your complaints. If you want to have a fulfilling life, decide not to make your life predictable. See, some people, their lives are very predictable. They got a little routine, they do that, and they follow that day in and day out, day in and day out. You don't get much juice and happiness out of life like that if you are predictable. You want to change it up. Variety most certainly is the spice of life. Here's something else. Want to create a greater sense of fulfillment? Challenge your fears. Challenge them. Look those fears in the face and take them on. Don't allow them to rule you. Decide that you're going to take some chances. A friend of mine by the name of Adrian, he said one day he decided to have a day of challenge. So he and a friend went to Cedar Point. <laughs> So he's always been afraid of certain rides. So he said on this particular day, he said he decided that he was going to go on the most dangerous rides at Cedar Point. So they went around looking at all the rides. And so the young lady that he was with and said, that's the one there. That's it. She's, he said, why that one? He said, well, she said, um, I, I read about it in the newspaper. said two people were killed last year on that. <laughs> he said, yes, that's the one I want. That's the one, you know. So he got in the line and said, it was a long line. They had to wait in line for about two hours. And they just said, while he was in line, and as they started getting closer, 
He said he stopped doubting him, said, well, maybe I should not do this. Maybe. So she says, no, come on, get back in line. He said, no, 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 I changed my mind. I don't want to do this. I don't have to have the most dangerous ride. He said he stopped visualizing himself being thrown out of this big ride and his name on the front page of the newspaper after being splattered against a wall or something. So he just started saying, no, I don't want to do it. But his friend insisted, no, come on, Adrian. We said we were going to do it. We we're going to confront our fears today. Come on, just stay in line. So he kept on. He said he was arguing with her the whole time. They got up there and the guy said, okay, next. He said, no, no, I just decided to change my mind. She said, come on. She pushed him. They went there and he got in the, in the little seat and they strapped him in. And as they began to move, he said, wait a minute, I want to get out. But it was too late. <laughs> Said he started taking him up. He says, oh, no, please, please, I got a bad heart. Let me out. And he was up there and he was gone. He said he screamed all through that ride. <laughs> His friend was laughing. A wig came off. <laughs> Before they finished, he'd lost his partial. <laughs> when he got off, he was gumming it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Adrian said, less when I got off, he said, I walked a little taller. <laughs> and he said he felt good inside. And one of the things he said, he said, hey, it wasn't that bad after all. <laughs> and we've all had experiences, things that we dread doing. And when we finally did it, we said, hey, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Raise your hand if you ever had that experience before. Hey, 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 I just thought I'd die if I did this. I didn't die. I'm still here. And ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's what most people miss out of life. You've got to be willing to risk. If you're not willing to risk, you can't grow in life. Life has no power when you're not willing to risk. Somebody wrote this and it was given to me. It said, to laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach out for another is to risk involvement. To expose feelings is to risk exposing your true self. To place your ideas, your dreams before a crowd is to risk their loss. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But risk must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, is nothing. They may avoid suffering and sorrow, but they cannot learn, feel, change, grow, love, and live. Chained by their certitudes, they are a slave. They have forfeited their freedom. Only a person who risks is free. I'm reminded of a missionary who had gone to Africa to work with a certain tribe, and they were called the headhunters. And there was a reporter observing him, and for a long period of time, he had a, a limited relationship with him. They would not take him in. And he said because he was tentative and hesitant and fearful, he didn't want to risk having a relationship with him because he didn't want to mess around and have his head taken off. <laughs> he had this fear, and obviously it showed, and the tribesmen sensed it. Say so one night he was sleeping and he made a decision because the reporter came back and saw him and he had an incredible relationship with the tribesmen, these headhunters. The guy said, what happened? How did you convert the distance, the hostility, into a warm, close relationship? He said, I had a dream one night. He said, I was thinking. And, and he said, I dreamed. He said, what, you know, what's my passion? What's my life goal? He said, I always wanted to be a missionary. And he said, this is the work I love. And he said, in the dream, he asked himself, how much do you love it? And I said, I'm willing to die for this dream. And he said, and he thought about that, and he woke up. That he loved doing this so much that if it was, in fact, his passion, that it was, in fact, his life's work, he's willing to die for it. And so, therefore, he said, he had no longer any fear of death. And he went in there and started working with them. And obviously, they picked that up. And he said something else that was profound. He said, when you no longer fear dying, what else can life threaten you with? What else? See, when, when you 
are willing to risk all of it. When you're making that kind of commitment, somebody always defined commitment, I love it, so the next time you have bacon and eggs, look at it, say the chicken was involved, but the pig was committed. <laughs> he had to give it all up. <laughs> See, when you're willing to give it all up, <laughs> See, that's, that's what life is. See, you've got to be willing to give it all up. When you're willing to, to throw it all on the line, that's when life takes on a whole new dimension. See, most people won't do that. They won't risk that. So decide to take some risks. You want to break the routine. Most people go through life following that routine, and we know that that is a living death. Going through life, playing it safe, is, is, is like a breathing corpse. Because the only way that you can grow, you've got to risk. The only way that you can become your best, you have got to risk. You've got to challenge yourself. You've got to venture into the unknown. You've got to take some chances. Got to put you on the line. So in order to have that sense of fulfillment, getting out of your comfort zone, as you get out of your comfort zone, you expand your whole life. The more you do, the more you realize you can do. You expand your capacity. You expand your potential. You expand your horizons. You expand your vision of yourself and of life. You expand your participation in life. You're involved in life more. You'll get more out of life because you're putting more into life than most people. That's why it's so important that we are willing to take some risks. I don't know exactly what to do. It's okay. You'll find out. You either learn that you're going in the right direction or the wrong direction. And from that you learn. You'll get some feedback. The universe will tell you, where do I get started? Just get started. The universe will give you immediate feedback. Don't worry. You hit your head long enough, you'll get the message. <laughs> Lose enough money, you'll learn real quick. Get enough knots on your head, it'll be all right. Here's something else. Choose to be happy in spite of life's challenges. In spite of life's challenges. Life changes every day. Sometimes things will be going your way. Sometimes things work well for you. Sometimes it won't work so well. Sometimes you'll have your health, you're feeling good and energetic, have a yes I can attitude and, and there's some things that can happen to you in life that can take all of that from you. All of that can go. Sometimes you might be financially secure and a sickness, one sickness can wipe out an illness. Life always change. But you can choose, you can choose in the midst of all of this that's going on to be happy in spite of it. In the good times and in the bad times, you can make a choice. Viktor Frankl, he, he talks about that. He said, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Douglas Matlock has a poem I love entitled, It's Fine Today. He said, sure, this world is full of trouble. I ain't said it ain't. Lord, I've had enough and double reason for complaint. Rain and storm have come to fret me. Skies are often gray. Thorns and brambles have beset me on the road. But say, ain't it fine today? What's the use of always weeping, making trouble last? What's the use of always keeping, thinking of the past? Each must have his tribulation, water with his wine. Life, it ain't no celebration. Trouble, I've had mine, but today is fine. It's today that I'm living, not a month ago, having, losing, taking, giving, as time wills it so. Yesterday, a cloud of sorrow fell across the way. It may rain again tomorrow. It may rain, but say, ain't it fine today? <laughs> Isn't that good? I like that. So even if a cloud of sorrow comes over here, Ain't it fine today, living in the moment, getting everything we can out of where we are in the moment where we are right now, living in the present. 
The other thing is willingness to let people and things go. You want to live a life of fulfillment. You've got to be willing to let certain people go in your life, especially if they want to go. <laughs> Don't get addicted to material things. Be willing to let things or people go. When they're no longer good for you, just let them go. Just to hold on tenaciously really doesn't make really good sense, all right? Just many times we do it because we don't realize that we might desire it, but we don't need it. Next thing is face the truth about life and deal with it. And a lot of people, when someone in their life that they love very much dies, they allow it to take such a toll on them, they make themselves miserable, and they literally will themselves to die early because they feel without this person they have nothing to look forward to. And no, no, life has other opportunities, other relationships, other experiences for us. And the people that we love really want us to go on. Other thing is, things are going to happen to you. Here, in order to have a fulfilling life, knowing that, that things are going to happen, expect the unexpected. Whatever happens to you, use everything for your upliftment, learning, and growth. Everything that happens, use it for your upliftment, learning, and growth. In the midst of it, ask, what can I learn from this? What can I get from this? How did I end up here? What's the blessing in this for me? Ask yourself that whatever it is, and don't let it go until you get your blessing out of it because there's a blessing there. There's a lesson there. There's something for you in everything that happens to you for you to learn from that experience. Look at it. Examine it. Analyze it. Dissect it. Take it apart until it reveals itself to you. And then get what you need from that and move on. But everything that happens to you, I have a friend, she stutters, and I said, are you taking any special classes to stop from stuttering? She said, N -n 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 no. I said, why? Because it helps my business. I said, how? <laughs> when I go in to somebody, I say, now, if, if you're busy, I I I'll come back because I, I, I stutter. And they used to say, oh, no, 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 you can tell me right now. And then she say, well, this is, this is my product. And she said, after she goes through it, and if they say no, she said, well, y you didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Let me t t t t t t tell you again. <laughs> and she, they say, oh, no, no, that's all right. How much you said it is? <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Don't tell, don't tell me no more. That's all right. Just let me know how much I need to give you <laughs> so you can get, 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 get on out of here. <laughs> so she's turned that stuttering to her advantage. Somebody says, if life give you lemon, write yourself a lemon cookbook. <laughs> so everything. So I have people say to me, hey, uh, I really feel sorry, you know, for you. The fact, it's a shame they labeled you educable, mentally retarded. I said, it's okay. I've told this story before. AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, Xerox, they pay a whole lot of money to head, too. <laughs> what would I have to say if they hadn't done that? You know, <laughs> whatever happens to you, turn it to your advantage. So I have now made that a blessing for me as opposed to a handicap. I went and proved them wrong by engaging in self-study and consciously working to develop myself. So now they have to ask themselves, what, what were we thinking about when we labeled this guy? What was going on? And then there are people who look at me and say, wait a minute, this guy, he, he labeled it, what? Re retarded, you gotta be kidding. If he's done what he's done, what can I do with what I've got? That's what happens, though, when I get through talking and, and motivating a sales force, they leave there ashamed not to be motivated. <laughs> Say, if that retarded guy can do it, I know I got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> They're ready to run out the roof, you know? <laughs>
I got to do something up in here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Am I making any sense to you? Huh? Here's something I encourage you to do. Whatever you do, do it in a consciousness of love. See, if, if, you, if you love what you do, and if you decide to love people, to make wherever you are an experience of love, just decide to be a loving person, regardless if the people you're around are loving or not. Just, see, I've never read anywhere where they say God has love. I've never read that. What is, what, but how does it go? What, what is it? God is love. Not that God has love. Now, if we are the children of God, we are the offsprings of God, then we are what? Love. See, love is not an emotion. Love is not something you can give. You, you can't give love. You must be love. You've got to be a loving person. So as you operate in that consciousness, and this comes not just overnight with enlightenment or insight or just someone recommending that, but with practice. Practice and practice and practice and doing it and doing it and doing it and working consciously. How, how do you do that? How, when, with all of the evil things and evil people, how, how do you do that? Well, one of the things is we've got to practice to be non-judgmental, to suspend judgment. That if you can, in the midst of where you are, I know a gentleman by the name of Jeffrey in Chicago when I go there do my training. He's a quadriplegic. He used to be a bitter young man. He's involved in a car accident and is paralyzed. Cannot move his neck. He's quadriplegic, complete. He used to be very bitter, very angry. He decided to become a loving person as a result of Jeffrey's decision. Jeffrey's life has taken a dramatic turn. He is now an inspiration and a blessing to other people. There are people who say, wait a minute. And I know one guy in particular who's always a cynical, negative guy, and I introduced him to Jeffrey. He said, if this guy could be pleasant and loving and have a smile on his face, how can I worry about this little stuff I'm worried about? How can I allow life to get next to me? How can I talk about being depressed when I can get up and move around and walk around? And Jeffrey can't do that, and he's confined to this wheelchair. Jeffrey has decided in, in a spirit of love to make his life a blessing to other people. He's going back to school. He writes with a pencil in his mouth. He is determined. Sometimes he becomes a little frustrated. Sometimes he does get a little depressed, but he doesn't allow it to keep him there. He's a loving spirit. You can feel it in his consciousness just being around him. You can look at him and feel good inside. He's an inspiration to the people that come in contact with his life. That's a decision that he has made. And I feel that we can all make that decision. And through practice, practice of being loving and giving out what we want, that we can become that kind of person in spite of the circumstances. Emmett Fox said, love is absolutely invincible. He said that there is no difficulty that enough love will not conquer, no disease that enough love will not heal, no door that enough love will not open, no gulf that enough love will not bridge, no wall that enough love will not throw down, no sin that enough love will not redeem. It makes no difference how deeply seated may be the trouble, how hopeless the outlook, how muddled the tangle, how great the mistake, a sufficient realization of love will dissolve it all. If only you could love enough, you would be the happiest and most powerful being in the world. And he ends it in a scripture that says, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Decide to be a loving experience in life. That whatever work you have to do, 
do it lovingly. That whatever relationships that you have, just decide to be more loving, more giving, more caring, more concerned, more sensitive than you've ever been before. But what if you don't get it back? It would be great if you get it back. It would be great. But don't count on it. You might get it back and you might not. But don't let someone else determine who you're going to be. Be who you are. Give what you want. Why? Because you want it back? No. Do it because that's who you are. Do it because that's how you've decided to live your life. Do it because it gives your life a sense of fulfillment and worth and self-respect. When we get off center, when we allow people or circumstances to determine whether or not we are loving because of the way they treat us or because of what we are experiencing, then we are not operating at cause in our lives. We are not controlling our destiny. We are not determining what happens to us and for us. And that's the power that we have been given, the power to choose ye this day. Whom you you serve? Who will you serve? Those negative feelings and emotions, anybody can hate. Anybody can be revengeful. Some people rather get revenge than get ahead in life. Anybody can do that. Anybody can hold a grudge. Doesn't take any greatness on that. Don't need any motivation and encouragement to hold a grudge. Have some resentment in your heart and some bitterness. But the real challenge about growth and moving into your greatness is about being who you are, being true to you. I say, as you look at life, here's something I like what Charles Fillmore said at age 94. I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm as I spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. I spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. And I say, as you go toward your goals and your dreams, Spring forth with a mighty faith to write the book that ought to be written by you. To sing the song that ought to be sung by you. To start the business that ought to be started by you. To help the people that ought to be helped by you. To make the difference in our society that ought to be made by you. Determine what is my life work? What is the work that I ought to do? How is it that I can make my life a great experiment? How is it that I can make the contribution that I showed up to give? Something that when I go to sleep at night, I can feel good within myself and know that I've given life my very best. And one last step, I think, in the area of self-fulfillment, and that is that you must live in a spirit and an attitude of gratitude. There's so many things, ladies and gentlemen, that we take for granted. So many things. As I look at my life, there are a lot of things I know I, I could have done, and I haven't done them, but I've also done some things, and I'm thankful. There are a lot of things that we need to be thankful for. There are big things, there are little things. I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my children. I'm thankful for my mother. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for, for the life that I live and for the people who have enriched my life, who have contributed to my being who I am. And as I look at my life, and I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and sometimes just laying there in the bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking, I just said, thank you, Lord. When I look back on my life, I've come a mighty long ways. And even if I 
don't reach my goals. I'm thankful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.